Welcome along to the Fitness Business Podcast Intensive Series. I'm your host, Chantal Broderick. Now, our intensive shows are where we take a deep dive into one specific topic and we break it down into easy to follow segments so that you can go away and implement the actions into your business right away. Now, our focus topic for today is organic lead generation and our expert guest who is joining me today is none other than Dan Henderson. Dan, welcome. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Chantelle. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and I'm really excited about this topic and doing a deep dive and sharing everything I know about organic marketing. Well, I am really excited too because I know that there's going to be lots of gold in here for all of the FBP family. So before we do dive into that information today, let me just take everyone through the four different segments and the Fit Bispiration that we have to look forward to today. So we're going to be talking about why you should be using organic marketing. We're going to talk about how to actually craft your message so that your content stands out then how to generate clients using organic marketing, and last but not least, what mediums you should be using. Now, as for the Keep Me Fit Bispiration today, that is going to be all about what are the latest trends with using organic marketing. Wow, we've got a lot to cover off, so we better get stuck straight into it. What do you reckon, Dan? A busy, busy uh, series. I'm looking forward to it. (laughs) It is going to be. So how about you get the ball rolling? Let's talk about organic marketing. First of all, I think it's important that you just set the scene for us. Explain to everyone what that term means. Um, Perhaps give us some examples and why should our fitness uh, family out there right across the world, why why should they be using organic marketing? Yeah, so organic marketing is a big term, Chantel. It's a big umbrella term and there's no universal definition. However, when I talk about organic marketing, I'm directly referring to content-based marketing, primarily on social media channels. And it is unpaid. So it is leveraging the channels themselves. So organic marketing is primarily content-based marketing, using content in many different ways and forms to build no like, and trust with your consumer. And that ultimately ends up with lots of leads and lots of clients. Now, in terms of why, um, you know, there's many, many reasons as to why a fit pro should be using organic marketing. Uh, First and foremost, it's just a great means. It it is an incredible means of generating clientele. In fact, I would say it's tied number one with paid traffic. So if you want to generate more leads in your business, then organic marketing is an area of focus. It should be a priority and it should be something that you really want to, you know, it's a skill set that you want to develop. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of the ins and outs of it. So you can walk away and you can implement it and deploy it into your business straight away. So it's a great means of generating leads. Not only that, it's a great means of amplifying your message. Um, You've obviously got a unique message. You stand for something. uh, You stand against something as well. And it's a great way of getting that message out to your community uh, and beyond your community as well. And then the last reason is it's great for your branding and reputation. You know, I largely attribute organic marketing to to many of the opportunities that I'm afforded today. You know, it's a privilege to be on a podcast such as this. Um, I've had the great pleasure of speaking in probably about a dozen countries uh, when we could do that. Um, I've featured on many, many different podcasts and the like. And I really do attribute organic marketing and the consistency of doing so that has helped me help enable that and open those doors. And so the same doors can be open for you. Uh, And the keys here with organic marketing is you need to know your message, you need to be consistent in that message, and then you need to be persistent as well. They're really the hallmarks of great organic marketing. And so some examples might be, it might be just posting on your personal profiles. That's you know, whether that's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's YouTube, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Instagram. Uh, it also might be utilizing your business profiles to also um, get your message out. Uh, Facebook community groups. So every kind of local suburb will have a community group. So we leverage those for organic marketing. And then your own Facebook groups as well. Uh, so that's a very powerful medium for Facebook uh, for organic marketing. And then in addition to that, it's also the conversations 
that you generate off the back of your content, off the back of your interaction. So really we're using organic marketing to build relationships. The more relationships we have, the more conversations we have. The more conversations we have, the more conversions we have. And so that essentially is how organic marketing works. And you really wanna be strategic. Uh, I think a lot of people dabble with organic marketing. You know, they'll say, Dan, I'm, I am posting regularly on Facebook. I am posting regularly on Instagram and TikTok and everything else, but there's no coherency to it. There's no strategy to it. It's just, you know, posting what you, you work out, posting, you know, the, the squat that your client did, posting your smoothie bowl in the morning. That's not actually an organic marketing strategy. And as a result, you're not going to get much in the way of uh, leads and conversions. So we need to have a very, very clear uh, end in mind and then have a strategy that matches that as well. And um, that's what I'm excited to share about because there's a lot of things that work in the organic marketing space. We have many, many, many clients of ours doing particularly well, as well as myself. Like my whole business is largely built off organic marketing. So I'm going to be sharing how do you craft that strategy so you're not just part of the noise because there's a lot of noise in the social media world right now. And we want you to cut through that noise. Everything, you know, I, I shouldn't use absolute language, but almost everyone is doing the same thing. And we don't want you to zig like everyone else. We want you to zag. And so I'm going to be sharing how you can zag in today's market and have that message really shine. So I think, Dan, that you probably hit on an absolute key that a lot of our FBP family, a lot of trainers out there can relate to, and that is, but I am posting organic content. I am putting stuff out there, but perhaps they're not getting the engagement. Perhaps they're not getting the cut through that you talk about. And I think quite often they then feel this need to go and spend money on Facebook advertising or investing. So I love the fact that you're here today saying, look, we can come up with a great strategy for posting organic content that is actually going to get us results, it's going to get us cut through, we're going to start to form those relationships. So I think that's really key because I just have this feeling there's going to be a lot of people out there listening that can relate to that situation that you're talking about. And I know that so many of our trainers put time and energy into developing their content, but perhaps they're at a bit of a standstill. Perhaps they haven't been able to take it to that next level to then create the relationships, which then ends up being, you know, leads for their business, which then ends up being paying clients. So I am really excited about this. Let's talk about that content strategy that you just touched on. For our viewers, for our listeners out there, where do they get started to make their content strategy for their organic marketing successful? Yeah, great question. And there's a number of things on this, Chantel. So Here's the, here's the big piece of advice that I'd like to share with everyone is do the foundational work first. So rather than just post for the sake of posting it because you feel like you should post, uh, rather take a step back and let's get really clear on who we are serving because we need to, serve, we need to create content that solves problems. And we can only understand those problems when we understand our prospect. And we need to understand our prospect better than they understand themselves. And so a lot of the time, people will feel this inclination. Oh, I put up three stories today. I posted daily on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, actually, you know what? I posted on TikTok. I posted on LinkedIn. I posted on Snapchat and everything else. But it's just, it's just fluff. It's superficial fluff a lot of the time. And so what you have to do is you have to take a step back and go, who is my client? Like really understand who your client is. And I put all of my coaching clients through a process where it's a series of questions so they can clearly uncover their avatar. Um, and what you want to do is you need to dig deep on this. You can't do it from a superficial perspective. You need to actually get inside their head. And it's one of the best pieces of marketing advice is enter the conversation in the prospect's mind. So how do you enter the conversation in the prospect's mind? You have to understand the prospect. So there's a number of questions you can ask to help you understand that prospect. Um, you know, like, and, and you should, you, you just need to be observant uh, in your client consultations, in your sessions, and write down, like, how did people feel before they started with you? 
What were some of the um, obstacles they had before they started with you? What were some of the reservations they had? What were some of the problems that they wanted you to solve? What were some of the things that you, they, that you solved that they had no idea that you would? And just start to be really just mindful of this and, and write them down and almost create you know, create, have a sheet of paper where you're writing all of these things down and writing all these key themes. Um, and when you choose your avatar or your prospect, you don't have to just have one, you can have multiple, but it is easier when you have less because then there's coherency and consistency to the message itself. So the first part is just understanding your prospect better than they understand themselves. Uh, and so I just want everybody out there in your health and fitness consult, in your sales consult, in your conversations with them on the floor or wherever it may be, I want you to start writing down and creating that picture and crafting that picture. Um, so that's the first part. The second part is I have every one of my clients undertake an activity called the four forces. And it was a, it was a model taught to me by a guy called Taki Moore, a great a great marketer and everybody out there can do this model. So if you have a sheet of paper, I want you to rule two lines, one horizontal, one vertical, and you now have four quadrants on the left side, on the top left, you're going to write frustrations underneath that. You're going to write fears, polar opposite to that. You're going to write wants, And then underneath that, you're going to write aspirations. So we have four boxes. We have frustrations, fears, wants, and aspirations. Now, this is a very powerful activity, extremely powerful activity. So again, you have to dig deep. You have to do the deep work on this. And what I want you to do is I want you to write down 10 frustrations that your prospect experiences. Now, what is a frustration? It's more short term in nature. So it's that nagging little thought, like it's not something that completely consumes them. But, you know, it's that dad that plays with their son and gets really tired uh, really quickly. And they go, I really should do something to improve my fitness. Or they look in the mirror and that belt notch just gets, you know, one bigger and they go, I really should do something about, you know, this growing middle-aged spread. Uh, it's that waking up of the morning and going, oh, my back's a little niggly. I should probably do something to strengthen my core to help improve this. So they're nagging little thoughts. So that's your frustrations. Now, when your frustrations manifest over a long period of time, they become a fear. And these are the things that really keep them awake at night. So I want you to write down at least five fears that your prospect may experience. And so it might be, you know, that that dad that's no longer as, you know, fit and as healthy and as strong for his son, that fear might be, well, I'm going to have metabolic syndrome like my dad and have an early death. That's my fear. Um, that back pain that I wake up with, that's going to be that debil debilitating back pain that is going to paralyze me for, you know, most of my uh, adult years. You know, it's those kinds of fears that really, really scare people. All right. So that's your frustrations and that's your fears. On the opposite side, you've got your wants. Now the wants are just the, sh they're, they're the polar opposite of the frustration. They are the mirror of the frustration. So instead of, you know, feeling out of breath uh, when they play, when I play with my children, I'm now feeling like really fit and healthy and I love playing with my children. It's no longer something that inhibits me. I now wake up and I'm pain-free. I'm feeling really mobile, really limber and, uh, and ready to attack the day. I look in the mirror and I like what I see. I'm proud of the person that I see in the reflection. Um, the aspiration is then taking that one step further is, well, maybe, you know, the, my aspiration is, I can run that marathon that I've always talked about and always, you know, dreamt, dreamt about. Maybe I can be the role model that my dad wasn't from a healthy perspective. And once you craft that four forces, you now have all the content you need to write and speak about. You just refer back to that four forces and you ask yourself this pivotal question, what problem, what fear or frustration am I aiming to solve with this piece of content? And how am I moving my prospect to that want and aspiration? And that's what content should do. It should solve problems a lot of the time. Um, 
a, a bathroom selfie, a smoothie bowl. That does not solve any problems. That is not a want or an aspiration. And that's what I see far too often. And people just feel the need to remove more clothing and have better lighting to get some kind of engagement on their content. And yes, they'll get likes and yes, they'll get comments, but they won't be from the people that matter. And the likes don't pay the bills. The comments don't pay the bills. We want to create content that solves problems because that is what's going to really generate a great clientele for you. So that's the first thing, Chantel, is I'd encourage you to do. Well, There's probably two things there. Number one, really just become very mindful. Uh, switch on that RAS, that reticular activating system, to become mindful of your prospect and listen to them S and start to write down and craft a picture. Second is do the four forces. Uh, the next one after that is I have a very simple strategy that I use with my clients once again, and that is you take a sheet of paper and you put a line down the middle. And on the left side, you put everything that you stand for. What are the philosophies and values that you stand for in your business? On the other side, what do you stand against? And I'm going to give you an example of this, Chantel. So I have these great clients in Gimpy, Real Body Movement. And uh, not too far away from you, actually, Chantel. Uh, and they're amazing. They started with me with absolutely nothing. And now they've upgraded and got this phenomenal facility and this great movement. It literally is a movement. But about 12 months ago, the founder Fiona rang me and she was upset because she said, Dan, right now we are losing a lot of clients to a competitor because they're advertising this free six-week challenge. They're advertising these amazing results. And, you know, it's, it's very, very tempting for my clients to move over there. And I said, that's, that's understandable. I get that. But have you articulated and communicated how you're very different from that competitor? Have you said, you know, how your philosophies are different, why you do what you do? And she said, no, I don't believe I have. And I said, no, you haven't. You've been playing it safe. Everyone plays it safe with their content and they won't stand up and announce what they stand for and against. So I said, what do they stand for? And she said, really calorie restrictive diets. Okay. I said, what do you stand for? She said, healthy, sustainable eating built around nutrition habits. I'm like, well, you need to start talking about that. Well, talk about how you don't like short-term challenges that limit the amount of calories that people have because it's unhealthy. People yo-yo, people rebound, and it's not sustainable for long-term. And this is your approach. And so she started to do that more and more and more. And she's quickly surpassed that other facility, which is a major brand, uh, because she has a strong message that people resonate with. But she only did so by getting very clear on what she stands for, what she stands for, and then what she stands against, and then communicates that accordingly. So that's the next activity that uh, is really helpful in crafting that message. Next one is this, uh, is... People buy people. They don't buy businesses. People buy people in our space. You know, I'm in the business coaching world. People buy coaches, not coaching. People buy trainers, not training a lot of the time. And so here is an absolutely awesome opportunity to showcase your message, your story, your vulnerability. You know, I'm, I'm extremely authentic in my content and people resonate with that. Like I make mistakes all the time and people that humanizes me. And that's what you need to do with your content as well. You need to show your personality. You need to show your vulnerability. You need to give them a peek into who you are outside of just the gym or the park or wherever else you may be practicing. Um, so that's the next thing you want to do. And then the last thing in terms of just really getting clear on the message, I know I've gone deep on this, but it's so important, is what I call a content filter. And it's very, very simple. It's just four questions to ask yourself before you actually create any specific piece of content. And it is this. Number one, what is the purpose in creating this content? So understand, like, what is the purpose? Is it to educate? Is it to entertain? Is it to drive a particular action? Because if there's no purpose, then you're just wasting time. Uh, second is this, how does this content solve a particular problem for my client? All right, so it's going back to that fears and frustration or prospect, all right? So it's going back to those fears and frustrations. How does it actually help that? Because that's what they need. 
You know, that's what the, that's what that's where you really come in, and that's where you shine. You solve those fears and those frustrations for them. Um, number three, does it respect my prospect's time? Like, if I'm going to, you know, write something long, or even it might be short, I'm going to film a video, I'm going to do a live, whatever it may be. Does it respect my consumer's time? Because right now we're busy. Everyone's busy, 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 and the three minutes. Does it respect their, their time? Because if it doesn't, they're not going to watch it again and they're never going to consume your content, all right? So you need to be really tight and prepared and know exactly what you want to say. And then number four, how does it move the, how does it move the prospect forward to help them know, like, not, um, know, like, and trust, all right? And even love, like, how can that help them know, love, and trust me? And those three things are very different in our content. Different pieces of content will help them know us. Different pieces of content will help them love them us. And different pieces of content will help them trust us. And so how does it help us do that? And so there are four very good questions to ask yourself before you produce a piece of content, because if you're going to put it out there, we want to make sure that it's absolutely getting the best result possible for you. So that's essentially how to craft the message, Chantel, um, and a number of just kind of different tips and, and tools and frameworks to help you to do so. Dan, that was phenomenal. And you probably saw me in the background typing away because I was writing some notes so that uh, I could do a quick little recap now for everyone because uh, whether you're watching this or you are listening to the podcast, uh, make sure you just take a moment to grab a pen and paper if you haven't already. And you guys know that you can head to the show notes too to get more information. But I just want to recap, Dan, because there was so much gold in there. And I love the practical examples and the practical exercises that you have given us, which is what our intensive shows are all about. So first things first, understand that prospect, understand your avatar, create your avatar so you know who it is that you're serving and who you're creating content for love the four forces that you talked about and as you were explaining that i could see that in my mind the vertical the horizontal line and working through our frustrations or the frustrations of the uh the prospect their fears their wants and their aspirations working out our values and philosophies that we stand for and against and i love the example that you gave of that gimpy um owner um, fitness owner and what she did to really showcase what was important to her, what her values were for her business and that helped her connect with her audience. Um, people by people, being authentic is, is so important. And of course, that content filter that you talked about right at the very end. Um, and I love that because you're right, it's so easy for us to go ahead and post that smoothie bowl or to post that selfie because that's where we're in the moment. And, you know, but if we stop and we think about what is the purpose, how is it solving the problem of the prospect? You know, what is it doing to move them forward towards achieving their goals or to connecting with you? I think there's so, um, so many good uh, thoughts and considerations in there. And I want to, before we move on, that was awesome. Before we move on to the next bit, from a practical perspective, we go away, we're going to work through these exercises and we've got a bunch of ideas off the back of this, like so much, so much content. From a practical perspective, what do you recommend as far as people actually preparing that content ahead of time? saving that content, scheduling that content. Just give us a few of your top tips in regards to, okay, now I've got all that information. Um, I've got a lot of stuff that I can prepare for my business, say, over the next six or 12 months. Practically, do I write it all up now and then schedule it? Do I pop it into a calendar? What's your recommendation? Great question. And there's a, a few systems that I use for this because you have to be systematic. First, first and foremost, it's very hard to think of content and create content on the fly. So if you're waking up going, I need to now do three stories, two posts, uh, one needs to be written, one needs to be video. So, so difficult. And really you're creating a mountain uh, that is going to be very difficult to climb. So what I recommend is this. Um, Carl Newport and his book, Deep Work, talks about it. Really dedicating a considerable chunk of time to doing all the content creation. So that is writing the content, that is really getting clear on the message of the content. Uh, it might not be filming the video or creating the graphic, but it's really creating the dot points and everything else, the, the real skeleton behind it. And so what I would recommend is that 
depending on how much content you want to produce, you do that on a regular basis, whether it's once a week or whether it's once a month. Um, you know, for me right now, Monday mornings, I've just switched over to this. Now, Monday mornings, I spend preparing all of that content together, putting it all together and, and really doing the deep work on the content itself. So that's the first thing is try, don't create content every single day. Do it in one considerable chunk because you'll just be able to think better. You'll be able to produce much more quality work. That's the way that the, the brain works and we want to tap into that. So that's the first thing. Second thing, there's a couple of frameworks again that we can use. Um, and so one of them is called the grid. Very, very simple framework again. But if you have a piece of paper, um, essentially what you're going to end up doing is having uh, at the top, you're going to list the five biggest problems, fears or frustrations that your prospect encounters. So you might have 20 because I've asked you to do a lot, but you'll go, these are the five most popular. These are the ones that I hear about all the time. These are the ones that people talk about all the time. These are going to be the five. And so you're going to write them at the top of your grid. And then on the left side, coming down, you're going to write down five different ways that you can share how you solve that problem. So here's five different ways or five different examples. Uh, it might be your story. So you tell a story, all right, your own personal story. It might be a client story, all right, and there's a format we use called Star Story Solution, which works really well for that. It might be a fact or a stat uh, that supports that problem, it might be a myth bust, you know, and so you dispel a myth in and around that. And then it might be like a celebrity example. All right. So there's five different ways that I can solve the same problem. And so now what I do is I have my grid and I just start populating it. I'm like, okay, this is the story I'm going to tell. I start writing down my key points. This is the um, client story I'm going to tell. This is the fact or stat. This is um, the myth that I'm going to dispel. And then this is the celebrity story. I've got five pieces of content that all solves that one problem. And it's very different because, you know, it's not going to seem like the same when I'm producing it every day. And then I'm going to do the same for the next four major problems. And now I have 25 pieces of content. I have 25 pieces of content that I can then distribute over the next four weeks, five weeks, however, however often. And so it's a great tool to just prepare. So that's the second thing um, that I would recommend. Third thing is this, is... Con organic marketing takes time. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to downplay that. It takes a lot of time. And so what I've been looking at is how can we get organic marketing more efficient? Now, I know a lot of people will sell done for you uh, marketing and done for you packs. I don't believe in those so much because I don't believe it's your message. I don't believe it's your, you know, I don't believe it's your personality. It's very generic. So what I would recommend is this and this is how I work with my uh, with my content is I will do all the production of the content I will film the video I will write the article I will write the quote and then I will have my virtual assistant curate it so I create she curates and so what that means is she creates the pretty graphics in Canva. She takes the videos, she puts the, you know, appropriate editing editing on them, the subtitles, the captions and everything else. Um, so she curates all the content and makes it look really pretty. All right. Then she will schedule all the content. So you can use, you know, the uh, schedulers in Facebook, you can use something like Schedulegram, you can use there's a host of them, right. Um, and she will schedule the content accordingly. So she's curating my content, she's scheduling and posting my content. And then she will largely do a lot of the interaction on my content as well. This just streamlines it for me. It makes it much, much easier because now I only have one focus and that's the production of the content itself, where she does the curating of the content. She does the scheduling and posting of the content. She does a lot of the interacting on the content. And then that means I can amplify and do more. Uh, as well. One of the other things I would like to point out as well, Chantel, is a lot of people will go, Dan, how much content do I need to produce? What times do I need to post it at and the like? Um, I would say focus less on that. I think it's the wrong question. I think, again, it's how many quality pieces of content can you com comfortably do right now in your schedule? So I'm not going to say you got to do 10 a day, you got to do one a day, you got to do one a week. It's like, I focus on the quality rather than the quantity. Focus on the depth rather than the breadth. 
And as long as you can have the capability to produce quality content, then there is no limitation, right? Okay, to a point. And so I just wanted to say that because it's a really common question that I get. And again, it's a myth that I want to dispel. Like you'll hear social media gurus go, you got to post 10 times a day. You've got to do this on the, you got to do it at Tuesdays at 3 p.m. and everything else. Look, there are preferred times, but it's so minute. What is going to give you the bigger impact is just crafting a unique piece of content um, and having a real system around it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Dan. And just to add on to that point, I always think that the type of content that you create and the platforms that you use also needs to link back to that avatar. You know, yes. what type of content is of most interest to my client? You know, are they people that will listen to a podcast or are they people that love reading a long form blog post, for example? And the better you know your client, the better you you kind of identify that avatar, the better you will know what type of content they most like to enjoy and where, what platform they like to enjoy it on. So love those tips, Dan. Thank you so much. Now, we've still got a, a whole lot to cover and I want to take us from that kind of content development piece to the connection piece. Essentially, how do we turn that organic content that we created and start to really move towards generating clients you know how do we actually go to that conversion stage with our organic marketing yeah yep yeah. uh, there's a number of different ways that we do that and i'm going to share each and every one of those what's some um, important about just before i do so very very important point that you made in terms of choosing the appropriate medium so just remember your marketing triangle market media message okay so you really want to have those um, appropriately connected in terms of the medium itself um, I think there's a law of diminishing returns. So you don't want to be on every single platform. Um, at the same time, you can recycle and repurpose content. So there is this balance between taking that video and now making it appropriate for YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. But at the same time, I would really just focus on two major platforms. Like you may post periphery on the other ones, but focus deeply on two major platforms that should be tied uniquely to your avatar and what they consume. And most of the time, it's gonna be Facebook and Instagram in most cases. Um, now, in terms of, we've now got this amazing content. We, we've given you the framework, we've given you the structure and the systems to create this amazing content. How do we take this content and turn it into clients? All right, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna have a rhythm with our content as well. If you want more clients, you need to put out more offers, all right? And you need to, a lot of people, really pull back on this because they're afraid if they put themselves out there and they get no response, then, you know, that leaves them kind of open and, uh, you know, that could be potentially for them embarrassing. What I would say to that is by you not doing anything, you're not getting any clients. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it doesn't work. Um, and yes, look, there's a level of vulnerability to put yourself out there, but if you've built an audience and you've served that audience with value, by the time you put out an offer, you are going to get a response. Um, now, on those pieces of content, you're going to get lower engagement. There's absolutely no doubt. But remember that you don't need everybody responding. You know, if you if one, two, three people put their hand up, then there's an opportunity to change three, three people's lives. So the first thing you want to have is a real rhythm with your content. You want to make sure, you know, it's kind of to take kind of Gary Vaynerchuk's model. You want to jab, 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 and then you hook. So deliver lots of value. You might have four value posts where you're just solving problems, solving fears, solving frustrations. Then you put out an offer. And there's different ways that we can put out offers. And I'm going to talk about those. So if anyone jumps on any of my platforms, uh, particularly Facebook and my Facebook group, you'll see that I use a lot of two steps. So what is a two step? A two step is putting out a resource to your prospect, to your audience and having them opt in. So a perfect example would be, I just created a referral masterclass on how to generate you know, 10 plus referrals each and every month. Who would like a copy? And then people are going to comment and go, yeah, Dan, I want a copy. I want a copy. I want a copy. I want a copy. So what that establishes to me is that these people have put their hand up and they need my help in some capacity or another. Maybe not in a paid capacity, but they need my help in some capacity or another. So again, you might 
think about your avatar and tie your two-step to that avatar. You know, it's just like, I just created a masterclass that gives you the five best exercises to prevent lower back pain. Who would like a copy? All right. Very simple. All right. Very, very simple. Um, or, you know, the time poor executive. I just put together five workouts that you can do in five minutes or less to help you blast fat. Who would like a copy? All right. Very, very simple. Then the people that are interested are going to put their hand up. And what we want to do is we want to give in public, sell in private with them. And so we just take them into a messenger conversation. Hey, thank you so much. Um, here's the resource that you requested. Um, just wanted to um, find out a little bit more about your current situation. Are you currently experiencing back pain? You know, and or are you currently not as healthy as you want to be? Um, are you finding it really difficult to exercise given your restrictive schedule? And so I'm just going to have a conversation with them. And here's the biggest key. The more conversations you have, the more conversions you have. And so we want to be having as many conversations with people as possible. I'm not talking about being a spammy douchebag on and just DMing everyone. I'm talking about having a conversation, unearthing need. And if you can help that person, then you propose the solution to them. Look, sounds like, you know, you're experiencing some serious back pain at the moment with you, you know, every time you exercise, I've got some ideas. Um, but before I share those, I just wanted to ask you, if it, would it be okay if I did so? Yes, that would be great, Dan. Excellent. Look, what would be easiest is if we just jump on a really quick call, you know, 10 minutes, and I can share some ideas that will really help you moving forward. How does that sound? Sounds great. Now I have a book call. All right. And so that's the way we want to move them from consumer of content into a phone conversation. So that's called a two-step. And for me, two steps are amazing because even if they don't end up booking a call through the conversation, they end up consuming a quality piece of content, which only helps strengthen that relationship. And I know that's going to come around. I get, I get, you know, a lot of clients say, Dan, I've been consuming your content for the last 12 months and now I've decided to work with you. Done. Beautiful. Particularly in my space where there's a lot of skepticism and cynicism and rightly so. Um, so that's the two step. The next one is a blunt post and a blunt post is simply just telling your audience who you're looking for and how you can help them. So it's, you know, you, you're going to have a, a, there's different ways that you can format it, but generally it's with a picture, it's with a graphic and it's, you know, I'm looking for five middle-aged women who would like to feel like themselves again. I'm going to personally coach you. So you begin to uh, once again, um, appreciate your body, feel fitter and more like yourself. Reply, keen if you'd like to know more information, all right? And so that's an example of a blunt post. You wanna be really clear on who you serve. You wanna be really clear on the problems you solve and the benefits that they're going to derive. No features mentioned in a blunt post. I'm not talking about how many classes they're getting or anything else. I'm talking about how I can enhance their lives and how I can enrich them. So that's a blunt post. So that's the, the second style of post. Um, Nine word is a different one. So this one was created by a great marketer called Dean Jackson. And what he found is that people traditionally broadcast, like here's my stuff, come and buy it. And he's like, why don't you be more conversational in the offers that you make? And so you want to try to get it to nine words. You don't have to strictly be nine words, but it's just like, um, you know, I created a brand new um, 21 day fat loss accelerator to help you lose three kilos and drop a dress size. Are you interested in finding out more information? Like that's an example of a nine word. Um, and so what you wanna do, whether it's a nine word, whether it's a blunt post, whether it's a two step, another one that we teach is called a five one thirty. So I'm looking for five people with one result in the next 30 days. That's the kind of format that it is. The other one is a beta program. So we teach about four different types. They're all calls to action. And what you want to do is you wanna be regular in your calls to action. And I generally like more like a kind of five to one ratio thereabouts in terms of five value posts, here's my call to action. And that's an explicit call to action. And all I'm trying to do really with those people is just get them to comment, get them to put their hand up, and then I'm going to have the conversation in private. I'm going to actually find out whether I can serve them and whether I can solve those problems and move them in their lives 
forward. Um, another one that we use, and again, this was created by Dean Jackson as a super signature. So it's a very soft PS at the end of pieces of content. Um, and really the way that it was described to me was someone comes over to your house and they'd really like a cookie, but they don't know that you're offering cookies. And the super signature is like, hey, here's a cookie, would you like one? And so it's just putting it out and making it really like PS, um, you know, if you'd like if you'd like more information on how to, you know, limit that lower back pain, then jump into our free Facebook community group where we share a ton of resources, you know, click here. Um, and so that's the super signature as well. So to generate clients, we need to put out more calls to action. Uh, to generate clients, we need to have more conversations. More conversations equals more conversions. Uh, there's many other different things that we do, but that's a, a starting point for people is to get into a rhythm of putting calls to action out there um, and just having more conversations. The other way that you can do so, which is really powerful right now, is polls as well. So polls on your stories and polls in your Facebook group are great. So it's just like, um, you know, you can ask, you know, very open-ended questions in terms of the poll, uh, very broad questions, I should say, is just like, um, you know, would you be interested in losing three kilos before spring starts? Yes, no. Anyone that says yes, then you can reach out to them. Hey, look, thanks so much for answering my poll. I saw that you're interested in losing three kilos. Um, just wanted to ask you a few questions and see if I could help you do so. Um, and so again, it's very non-invasive. We sell in private, but I'm uh, opening up the opportunity for the conversation through the poll itself. Um, so there's a number of different ways, Chantel. I've got plenty more, but uh, I won't I won't divulge them all today. No, that is fantastic. You've given us a bunch of really great ideas. And I just want to circle back to what you said right at the very beginning in regards to making sure that we're continuing to deliver value to our prospects and to our audience out there by, by creating that, that organic content that you talked about, but then feeding in, seeding in some of these um, call to actions, these examples that you've given us, I think is really good because we all know what it's like when you um, start following a Facebook account or an Instagram account and all they're doing is pushing sales messages. You lose interest straight away. So to be able to continue to provide that value, um, showcase our expertise as a trainer and then start to drop in some of those great methods that you've talked about, Dan. They were just fantastic examples. Lots of practical things for all of the FBP family out there to try. Okay, Dan, so we're gonna move on to the final part of today's conversation. We're kind of gonna round out our final question along with our Fitbizpiration. So here's what I wanna to know to finish off. What mediums should we be using when it comes to our organic social media? And share with us just a couple of the latest trends in relation to organic marketing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chantel. So in terms of the mediums that you should be using, again, we go back to your prospect. Where are they spending a majority of their time? Um, and look, there's always the, the shiny object. There's always the new social channel that everyone wants to jump on. Uh, I would say refrain from doing so and really think about where is my client spending most of their time? Uh, for most people, it is Instagram and Facebook. It really is. There are opportunities on YouTube. There are opportunities on TikTok. There's opportunities on LinkedIn. However, they are very, very specific. And so what I would recommend is that you really master your Facebook and your Instagram and build a great connection and following there. And when I say build a great following, I'm not talking about a you know, you don't need 100,000 followers. You might only have 100, but they are interacting, they're engaging, and they love everything that you produce. Um, so in terms of the content, some of the things you want to do, if you naturally, again, you might be better in written word than you are in video, uh, for example, but video is really, is just absolutely doing really well when it comes to engagement and reach. Uh, and particularly video, you might want to make sure you've got little things on there, like, like your subtitles and captions. You want to keep them short. You want to keep them sharp. You don't want to just do talking head videos. You want to get out on, like if you're in a local community, do the videos in local community landmarks, all right? So people recognize it. Hey, there's that, you know, particular mountain or there's that particular cafe um, as well. Reels for engagement, 
uh, going through the roof, uh, absolutely going through the roof. So if you haven't done any reels on Instagram, you need to have a look at doing so. Um, stories continue to be fantastic. Like they really do um, for building great relationship and interaction as well. So the trends are definitely those. We, I mean, this has been a trend that's been going on for a long while. Your business page on Facebook, it's not going to get much interaction. It's going to get next to nothing. If you look at my business pages, I don't post on them anymore. Um, it's all on my personal page. So your personal page has really become your marketing channel. It's not just where you know, you're posting you know, pictures of your kids and everything else. Um, it's become your marketing channel. So it's going to be on your personal page. Uh, the other thing that is great is the local community groups and having some regularity in and some frequency and posting in those. Because if you're a face-to-face -face trainer, you want to become the local celebrity. You really do. You want everybody in that community, in that suburb to know you. Uh, and one of the great ways is just going into that community group, connecting people, might have nothing to do with fitness whatsoever. You're just there as a connector. You know, someone's after a painter. Hey, look, I know this great painter. And you're just that person that has all the solutions. You're going to build a great following and interaction um, that way as well. And then Facebook groups are still really, really uh, powerful particularly in the way that you utilize them. So you want to get a lot of social proof. If you've got an open community group, and I'll give you another example of a client of mine. Um, she's in the Central Coast and she doesn't. She didn't like doing paid marketing. We did some paid marketing. She didn't like it. She's like, damn, this isn't resonating with me. So I said, well, let's just do what does resonate. And she's like, I love community-centric focus. I'm like, well, let's create a health and fitness group. So it was just her suburb, health and fitness. And... Um, and then she ended up changing it to food and fitness. So it was kill care, food and fitness. And she wouldn't just put her content out there. She'd go to the local butcher and talk about the, you know, organic free range eggs. She'd go to, you know, the health food shop and talk about the specials and some of the things that they have there. And so now, you know, she's the go-to space that people want to find out everything that's going on about health food and fitness in the community itself. So again, another, another way of doing it, but very, very powerful and a great way to cut through. Now, in terms of um, some of the trends that I'd really, just some of the things that I'd really recommend you do right now in your organic marketing uh, to really maximize it is I'd share a lot of social proof. This is the trust element. We talked about no love and trust. Um, I'm sharing a ton of social proof on my channels because I want to share the amazing results that my clients are getting because I know that's going to inspire other people. Um, you have a look at Cialdini's book, Influence, and one of the six influences is social proof. So people will resonate that. Hey, look, if Johnny can do it and if he can go from 10 clients to 100 clients, then I can as well because he you know, says a lot of the same things that I'm thinking right now. So I'd be doing a lot of social proof uh, I would be having some regularity in your stories, in your reels. Um, and then here's the other thing that a lot of people don't do that I'd encourage you to do is anybody that interacts, if they like, if they comment, just reach out to them. Just go, hey, Chantel, I really appreciate you. Thank you for liking and supporting my content. I'm really grateful. That's it. You're not asking, you're not asking for a sale or anything else. You're just expressing some gratitude. And remember, the more conversations you have, the more conversions. And so you just want to open up those avenues as much as you possibly can. So they're the mediums to use. They're some of the things that are working right now that are going to help enable you to generate a lot of leads. A lot of our guys are generating easily 10 plus leads per week with organic marketing. And here's the other beauty of organic marketing is that the quality of the prospect, the quality of the lead that you get is very, very strong. The better your organic marketing, the easier sales becomes because they already know you. There's already trust. You don't have to convince them. So if you don't love sales, then organic marketing is going to be a fantastic focus for you because it's going to make sales so much easier. So I just wanted to finish on that point. Great point to finish on. And Dan, I've got to say, you have just delivered so much value in the last 60 minutes. I want to thank you so much for really doing a deep dive into all of those areas, teaching us all about organic lead generation. I loved the 
practical exercises that you gave us around content generation as well, and also converting those, uh, those contacts into customers. So absolutely brilliant. The recommendation that I want to give all of the FBP family right now is we've had a lot of content from Dan this morning. So do yourself a favor, break it all down, rewind the show, whether you're watching it on video or if you're listening to it, and start to work your way through each of those sections that Dan shared with us today. Okay, work your way through it, decide that you're gonna focus on the first 20 minutes of the show, re-listen, re-watch, and start working your way through one bit at a time uh, because there is a lot to get through there. And Dan, thank you so much from all of the FBP family for sharing that great advice with us today. I think that everyone's gonna have uh, plenty to keep them busy over the next couple of months and really starting to generate some great quality content for their business and connect with those prospects out there. So I wanna say a huge thank you, Dan. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and thank you to everyone listening. Uh, I really appreciate you doing so. Um, more than just listen to this, action. That's what I want you to do because it will have, it will pay powerful dividends. You will serve a lot of people, you will solve a lot of problems and you will move your life forwards as a result. So I encourage you to do so. And uh, thanks again for the wonderful opportunity, Chantel, and uh, the whole team. Such a pleasure, Dan. And guys, make sure that you head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Check out all the show notes for today's episode. It's going to have Dan's details in there, as well as the video and the podcast and a few other little bits and pieces in there for you guys this week. So thank you so much for joining us. And I will see you for our next Fitness Business Podcast Intensive Show.